Hi everyone, Roger here from Asset Car Experts YouTube channel and today I want to show you this little guy here, the BD300 Professional Scanner for BMW Vehicles from Ansel. I really do love the Ansel product. I have another scan tool that I've always used for BMWs and they asked me to take a look at this one and you're going to check it out with me. Ansel is also giving me a discount code so make sure to check the description box for easy access to that link so you can pick up one of these BD300 scan tools. This is not a paid promotion. They just asked me to take a look at their product since I already like their other scanner. We're gonna do two things today. One, I'm gonna show you how to do full battery registration using this Ansel dongle. That's what this is called right here. This is basically just an OBD2 plug and you need to use your smartphone. So this works off of Bluetooth with your smartphone. And we have some live diagnosis on this car because they have a check engine light and we're gonna take a look and see what it might be on a BMW X5 F15. You have to download the Ansel app right here, which I've already done. Driver's side by the pedals is your OBD2 port. And you just take your OBD2 dongle from Ansel and plug it in. And it should light up to know that you are connected. And then we're gonna go to the app. So it is already connected. So if you take a look at the way that this works, it has just this cool turntable. We're gonna go under diagnostics right here because they did ask me to check and okay. All right, they did ask me to show you how to register a battery. So we're gonna go under battery management. So under this, it gives you BMW service reset, which actually I have to reset the brake fluid on this car, replace the brake pads. That's gonna probably retract the electronic parking brake. We have battery management and ETC re reset and OBD2. So we're gonna go to battery management and we have a couple things to choose. We have the micro power module or the ECM, which is the most common. We're gonna go under ECM because that's where we're gonna find the battery registration information. So it's as simple as that. So here's our register battery change or you can evaluate your battery state of charge. This is actually pretty important. Let's just take a quick look at that. It's gonna read from what is called the IBS or intelligent battery sensor. It's gonna give you some information on how it works. We can actually look to see the last five days of the battery charge. I'm gonna just hit okay. You can see here five days ago, we were at 85% and one day ago, 97, and the current battery charge is 90%. So you can actually check the health of your battery very, very easily. You can also check your histogram. That basically is going to tell you if how long your battery has been discharged. And you want it more in the high range, 80 to 100%, 22,000 hours, 60 to 80, 20,000, 40 to 60 and 3,000 range, that's okay. But if you see a high number in the zero to 20 or 20 to 40, the battery most likely is going to need to be replaced because it could be sulfated if you see it in that range. So if you do have to register a battery change, and actually just hit here to go back, you hit register battery change. Let's just say I've just replaced my battery. You say, do it. Let's do it. Okay, so it says display kilometer reading of the last battery change because it's stored in the car. I'd press one and I can see when my last battery change was done at what kilometers. We're gonna select two for replacing the battery. All right, and it's as simple as that. The battery was registered successfully in the DME and it's now entered with replacement mileage of 29,520. That is as simple as that. So once you put your battery in, you wanna tell your engine computer that the battery is new so that the alternator can charge correctly. So this is a very important step that Ansel can give you just with this easy and inexpensive tool. So let's go back because I need to do a full scan on this car because I have a check engine light. So let's go under diagnostics and let's go under BMW right here. And I'm gonna hit okay. And it's going to scan for me. And then it's gonna come up for what series. So this does BMW, Mini, Rolls Royce, and you can do a generic scan too. So I'm gonna do BMW. We know that we have not any of these. We have an X series vehicle, we have an X5, and it kind of helps you out because it's not an E53, it's not an E70. Yes, it's an F15. It's not a G05, which is a newer car. So we have an F15 and we can do a system scan, special functions, manual select or race fault codes quickly. 
we are going to do a system scan and I want to do a deep inspection just to see what faults we have. So this is kind of cool, it gives you a little animation of a car driving over a bump and bending BMW aluminum rims like they all do unfortunately, right? Boom, boom. Man, that would definitely do a number on your suspension. So we're going to let this scan and we're going to take a look and see what may be causing the check engine light on this X5. So one of the reasons why I really love the Ansel product is on a BMW, it scans all the modules, airbag, the STML, that's the driver's module, that's the right driver module, give you the right acronyms, TRSVC, that's all around vision camera, ZGM, central gateway module, IHKA, AHM trailer module, this does have a trailer module installed function roof center fzd these are all acronyms that me as a bmw master tech are familiar with smfa smbf those are seat modules the controllers they give you everything i mean i have always been impressed with the ansel uh handheld that i have which is the this one right here the bm 700 but it's so nice just to have a dongle that you can just have in your back pocket bring it with you and then just use your phone to scan a car so i can look through all of these if i want to but i need to check out why the check engine lights on so i'm not going to go to my cast system that's my start stop uh, information and the key information to allow for starting uh, car access system we need to look at the engine control module so let's take a look and see what we got all right so it tells me my version don't care Read fault codes, this is what I need to know. So I have a mixture control, mixture too lean or large deviation, and I have a mixture control, mixture too lean. All right, so I can clean, I can clear code, I can rescan, but now we're gonna go in the engine compartment and try to figure out what could cause a mixture too lean. So let's just say common sense, probably an air leak. Let's go see what we can find. It's only 92 degrees today and it is hot and I just worked all week with no AC in the shop I work in. So it's a little brutal this week. Let's pull this cover off right here and take a look and see what we can find. Okay, the engine's pretty hot. All right, let's take a look. So this is the N63 engine. Here's my turbos right on top. Some of the common spots that I would expect to see an air leak from is any kind of intake piping or um, any of these crossover tubes for the PCV system. So we're just looking for anything. Oh, look at that, I just found it. So look at this right there. So there's a lot of heat that transfers up here. Can you see that open up? Right there. There's a ton of heat pouring off of these turbos just from running it for a short time. So there's my mixture issue right here. Uh, another way to find this would be to perform a smoke test of the vehicle, although this one's a little bit more complicated. You have to close off both sides and then pump the, the pressurized smoke through and then you would see it pour out right here. But I already had an idea of what it might be. I have to check these hoses here, this crossover pipe, and some of these crankcase hoses are actually covered by warranty extensions. So depending on your mileage and the year of your car, this actually might be covered. I'm gonna go take a look for him. And bam, I'm back already. So I just did a quick check and these crankcase hoses are covered for 10 years and 120,000 miles. Uh, that's in the US market. There is a warranty extension for the crankcase hoses I believe this hose is part of it because it goes down to this lower hose here and This car only has 70,000 miles on it and the in-service date you do know, need to know the in-service date is 3 of 2015 so that puts it within the 10 years no problem so this is actually covered by an extended warranty, so I'm gonna tell my friend to contact his local dealer and he's gonna get this fixed for free. Hey, if you're wondering if uh, your vehicle has a warranty extension on a specific component that I've talked about, you can always send me the last seven of the VIN and I'll try to help you out and answer that question. I would need the last seven of the VIN and your current vehicle mileage. Now I did walk away from the car with my phone, so it did disconnect me. So let's just see how well this reconnects. All right, so there's my Ansel. I can see I got one bar. Oh, there we go. It just took a second. So I'm in the car and the dongle is down installed. It popped up to full bar. I probably will have to rescan the car. 
And what I want to do next is actually there's no point in me clearing the codes. They're going to need the codes for this to actually be under warranty. So what I want to do next is reset the brake fluid. So, so I'm going to just go back to the main screen here, go under diagnostics, and instead of BMW, I'm going to do service reset. So let's take a look at the service reset and how easy it is using this Ansel. All right, it's going to communicate and we'll perform an oil reset or a vehicle check reset. I want brakes, brake fluid. So let's see if we get, so this is engine oil and vehicle inspection. So the oil is 68%, the vehicle inspection 17%. That's not what I'm looking for. I don't want oil reset. All right, so let me show you a couple quick things here because it was a little confusing on where to find some of the service resets. If I go under this main list here, it says service reset. This service reset is actually only for the oil change and the vehicle check. So this will do engine oil and vehicle check. Now I need to reset the brake fluid. So this is not where you would go. You still go under diagnostics, but instead you have to go to BMW. It's gonna read out the car once we select the series. So we're gonna go down and select, we want BMW and we want this for an, oops. We want this for an X series here, and we have an X5 and we have an F15. Now, once you delve into the specific car, it's gonna give you the special functions, and that's what we want. So we're gonna hit special functions right here, and we're going to hit CBS reset. Now we can see this is also where to get to the electronic parking brake, and you get battery management and more resets here. So we're gonna do the CBS reset. And CBS resets can be 100% and you have a service counter. Uh-huh, yep, wear value, I'm gonna say okay. And we're gonna take a look at the actual values in the car. So it's another way to get to these resets and this kind of gives you a more comprehensive view, right? Engine oil, vehicle inspection, front brakes, rear brakes, and brake fluid. So I need to reset my brake fluid. So we're going to just read through this. It says, press the enter key to reset. Well, I have cancel and okay. So I guess okay is enter. I'm gonna hit okay. Establishing communication. And it should reset. And then I can go into the iDrive. And, oh yeah, so now it's at 100%. So look at that, it's now 100%. And I can check in the iDrive under service required and just verify that it did reset. It's always a good idea. So engine oil, vehicle check, brake fluid, that's the one I just reset. Front brake pads, rear brake pads. So it was as simple as that. I don't need all the button pressing, you know, press and hold, press and hold. If you have check control messages up here, sometimes that can really mess you up and you can't reset as easily as you would like because you're being overridden by a check control message. That's when a great tool like the Ansel scan tool would come in handy and it would just be super easy just to go in real quick and reset your services. So this is a great way to reset the services. Let's look at the parking brake because if you're doing rear brakes, so we have a bedding in procedure for the parking brake and we have a startup for the parking brake. So we can go into uh, workshop mode, which I don't really want to do right now because I'm not doing brakes. And I don't know, even know if that's actually the function that I would want for the brakes. Let's go back to the beginning real quick and just see diagnostic overall. So I want to replace the brake pads. I want to see what's under that. So EMF parking brake. Let's say I want to replace my rear brakes and I have an EMF parking brake. So I want to click on that and I want to see if this is going to retract it. So it says the same thing. We have workshop mode. So if I hit yes to workshop mode, let's try that. Do it. Following conditions must be met. Ignition on, vehicle stationary, parking brake released. Okay, sure. The parking brake is moved to the installation and mounting mode is activated. And the EMF button is deactivated when assembly mode is activated. The parking brake function with EMF is not available. So this is so that you don't have to use that special tool that to uh, manually crank in the rear parking brake. You would actually just do this and you're gonna get a warning. So look, I have a parking brake malfunction. That's because it's in that mode. 
All right, so I put in that mode and then I shut the key off and I can go ahead and then just press in those rear calipers nice and easy. All right, so what happens when you're done? Okay, so does it give you, it gives you the startup and parking brake bedding in procedure. So same thing, so let's just say we went ahead and replaced them. I probably do the bedding in procedure, but let's do the startup because I didn't actually replace brakes in this. So we're gonna start up, parking brake is started up using the service function. After replacing the EMF, the bounding cables, the button, or the brake caliper, the ignition has to be turned on. It's gonna walk you through this. Installation mode is deactivated at the beginning of the startup procedure. That's what I want. Gonna hit okay. It says the parking brake must be released at the beginning of the startup. To do this, activate the foot brake and press the parking brake button. Releasing the parking brake takes approximately three seconds. So I'm gonna use the button and I'm going to release. And that's actually activating it and i'm going to release it and hit next now it says pull the parking brake button and wait for three seconds for it to set same thing press and hold press it really hard with your foot and then pull up on the parking brake button i can hear it running and that's going to reset it and hit ok to do this activate the foot brake yep and it has been started up successfully and then i would go in next and I would go in and just clear all of my codes. It's as simple as that. So this is super easy. Instead of having to crank in your rear parking brake, electronic parking brake, you can just use this. Here's a word of caution though. Uh, make sure that you never have your calipers hanging when you do a startup. You think that it's retracting it, but pressure can build in the caliper pistons and it can blow out the piston. So you wanna do this before you take the brakes apart don't do it after all right one more thing i just got to look at let's just look at battery check because i'm very very curious give me this cool little animation of liquid floating around in a battery and i guess we can do a reference voltage reference or just hit start it's going to say turn off the vehicle and then hit okay all right start energy all right cool little car drive in here so i guess that means to start the car And there you go right there. It's gonna give me the voltage dip that happened. You can see your minimum voltage was 9.33, engine off voltage was 12.12, and my max voltage was 11.8. So it just gives you a general reference of how far your start, your cranking voltage pulls down. Um, the voltage reference, let's see what that is. So it gives you some information. You know, below 10.8 won't be able to start the car. Voltage between 10.8 and 11, difficult to start. So that's actually not very healthy for your battery. You know, you want your battery really around 12.8 before starting. Yeah, 11.8 to 12.8 it should really be higher than 11.8 in general. But that just gives you some information. All right, so there's plenty more things in here to mess around with. I'm sure you can. You can delve into some other diagnostics in here and other resets. There's the regular OBD2, OBD2 reset right there. So under the diagnostic, they give you this manual select. So you can actually choose a module you want to read. Like, let's look at the parking brake. Let's see if I set any fault codes. Okay, so no fault codes with me doing that activation. So you can actually delve into each individual module without having to do a full system scan. If I just wanted to check the engine control module, and this vehicle has two, it actually has two, so we actually have to read the codes. And there's my mixture too lean, and that's in the engine control module one. Do we also have the same codes in engine control module two? Kind of funny, we don't, because the main information actually is stored in engine control module one. This tool is a great tool to have. It's not that expensive. Antel is also giving me a discount code, so make sure to check the description box 
for easy access to that link so you can pick up one of these BD300 scan tools. So I'm super happy with the way that this works. It's very streamlined. So to me, this is a no-brainer. This is a great tool to have in your toolbox. Very happy with it. If you have BMW, Mini, Rolls-Royce, or just need a generic scan tool, this would be something that I would definitely purchase and have in my toolbox. This is a and very specifically, this is a BMW full system diagnostic scan tool. Great job, Ansel. Very happy with it.